Hello there. Presented by the Atlas Strength Shop. This is the Atlas Nerds in Iron Podcast. Good evening and welcome to the Atlas Nerds in Iron Podcast. I'm your host, Cameron Ray. This is our beautiful co-host, Mr. Matthew Cavalier. How are you doing today, Matt? Doing great. All right, in the, uh, in the entrance of full disclosure, this is our second round of this. We tried to go live on TikTok, but I forgot to fo- plug my phone in. So I got that 20% battery warning and the TikTok live started. So for those of you who prefer to watch us in YouTube format, y'all would have been uh, missing out had we not started over. So this podcast, we're going to talk about what went on during the Arnold uh, Strongman Classic. There were, I want to say, 10 athletes total, if I remember off the top of my head. But yeah, that's what we're going to get into. But first, we are going to talk about our sponsors. First and foremost, we have Unmasked Studio. Go check him out on Instagram and Facebook. He's a maker of boutique cosplays. He's got one for the new Batman that just came out. I swear to God, it looks like this dude walked onto a Hollywood production, grabbed one of the costumes, and walked out with it. It is so lifelike. It is so high quality. Go give him a like. Go give him a follow. Tag us in your favorite one of his cosplays. Buy one of his cosplays if you so can afford it. And, yeah, if not, just do what you can to get this guy boosted in the algorithms in front of more eyes. Next up, we have StrikeForceEnergy.com. What is Strikeforce Energy? Strikeforce Energy is a veteran-owned energy supplement. They come in these uh, little tiny little packets about the same size as a crystal light pack. You just pour it in whatever liquid you are drinking, and it's going to give you some flavor, and it's going to give you 160 milligrams of caffeinated goodness come in four flavors lemon orange grape and original the original tastes a lot like red bull i personally like mixing that one with liquor and yeah it'll it'll get get you what you need and i really like strike force later in the afternoon when i don't quite need an energy drink or pre-workout but it's too late in the day for coffee it's just enough to take the edge of the tiredness off without a big crash and yeah Use promo code Atlas Strength at checkout, and you're going to save you 20% on all of your energy needs. Plus, yep. I got some cool apparel, too. Next up, we have Impact Mouth Guards. Go to impactmouthguards.com. Use promo code Atlas Strength Shop at checkout, and you're going to save 10% on all of your mouth guard needs. You like your teeth? I know I like my teeth. I use an Impact Mouth Guards every time I lift heavy. And yeah, I'm able to bite down, get a good, uh, get a much better brace, and it keeps me from cracking my molars, which you know nobody wants to crack their molars. Nobody wants to crack their molars. Yes, uh, they also have a lot of things like athletic tape. Uh, they have they have a lot of good apparel on their website. But use promo code Atlas Strength Shop, and you're going to save ten percent on all of their stuff. Last but not least, we have the Atlas Strength Shop. That is us. We are the Atlas Strength Shop, located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And we are a strongman power Olympic, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, Highland Games, whatever kind of strength sport you want to compete in, we've got you covered. And again, we are in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Are you not located near Baton Rouge, Louisiana? That's cool, too. We have a lot of really cool apparel available on the website. And if you use promo code ATLASNERDS10 at checkout, you're going to save 10% on any of that apparel. So, yeah, those are our sponsors. So, let's get into the, uh, the start of it. Let's get it. So, first and foremost, with the Arnold Strongman Classic this year, a huge curveball was thrown, I think, two days prior to the event actually starting. And that is Mateusz Kislikowski hurt his tricep again. Right. And had to drop out of competition. That's how Bobby Thompson got in, right? Yes. Bobby Thompson was an alternate, and that is how he wound up getting to slide into that slot. But it's unfortunate because it seems like these events were almost tailor-made for Kilsikowski to win this year. Okay. You know, like all those events, he was really, really good at. He's he's good at moving events. He holds records in the uh, in the sear dumbbell and the, well, he doesn't hold records in the log, but he holds records in sear dumbbell and the tombstone. He is an incredible log presser. Like this, and there wasn't a deadlift in this competition, which the deadlift has always been his worst event. Okay. So it almost seemed like the promoter said, okay, what events can we make to get Kilsikowski on top of this podium? And those are the ones they chose. And then the dude had the nerve to hurt his uh, tricep. That son of a tricep, bitch. A few days prior to the event actually happening. But all in all, we still had an awesome show. There were a couple of shootouts that were really cool. And, yeah, we're going we're gonna to get to talking about it. Awesome. So the first event. Uh, was the double T squat, which I don't know why they called it the double T squat. Did they ever say that? Like why they it's, chose to call it I think it that? it's just what Rogue calls that bar, a double T bar. I don't really know why they go with that, but I don't like it. Uh, for those of you that don't know, they used a Buffalo-style bar, which Buffalo bars have been around 
for a very long time. Mm. I know West Side has a version. Uh, Kabuki Strength has a version. Now uh, Strength Shop USA has a version. It's actually a version we own here. Right. Uh, now apparently Rogue has a version too. Yep. And that's the bar they decided to use. My guess is they use that bar for marketing purposes. But they said the reason why they went with that bar in the sh- in the actual competition was because it was easier on the athlete's shoulders. I can believe that. I can believe that. I can believe that, too. I will say the last time I squatted with a bow bar, that's when I hurt my wrist, though. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know how related the two things were, but... Well, that's that's generally why I... That I hear why people like using that buffalo bar is because it's easier on the shoulders. Um, And when talking about strongman guys at the Arnold Classic, these are massive human beings. Yes. And sometimes getting that arm back there to brace a barbell can be a little tricky for some of those guys. It can be. Um, personally though, I don't like the idea of using such standardized equipment in a, in a strongman competition at that level though. I just mm. thought the entire event was extremely boring to watch. If I uh, wanted to watch a squat, if I wanted to watch 10 athletes squat their three best attempts, I'd just go watch powerlifting. But I could, I could see that. Um, but I enjoyed the race, uh, cause you had a slew of guys, you got two or three attempts in and you still had. You had Mar- two, two you, or three guys who didn't even go in their first attempt yet. You had Martins and JF Carone. They didn't go in, didn't yeah. come in until they were over 900 pounds. Right. Martins Lisi's first attempt was 901. And yes. that kind of blew me away. It's like, Jesus, your first attempt is 901? Mm-hmm. That is insane. Um, at the end of it, it was it was a shootout between Martins, Rob Kearney, who I wasn't expecting, and JF Carone. Rob, Rob Kearney was another holdout. I didn't expect him to hold out. For as long as he did for his first attempt, but he his first attempt was like eight sixty six or something mm-hmm. like that. And not only did he come in second in that event, but he mm-hmm. crushed his third attempt too. He did, he did. And JF Carone moved nine sixty six like it was that empty bar. That was kind of scary. I think he has a thousand pounds in him. Oh, easily, like easily. I the way that bar moved with that much weight, it's like now, nah, now nah, he. This is where he's stopping, but he has a lot left in him. I just hope what doesn't happen is the same thing that happened a few years ago with the elephant bar deadlift, where everyone started chasing to be the first competition that has a thousand pound de- or that has a uh, what was it a five hundred and one kilogram deadlift. Mm-hmm. I hope we don't start seeing something like that with the squat because the I'd, squat was so boring. I don't think that's gonna happen. Just because I, I just. Because when I think strongman events, deadlift, obviously, and all its variation, but I just don't see, you know, barbell squatting as a staple strongman event. Well, we saw it here in the Arnold, which was argue, which is arguably the heaviest strongman competition of the year. Right. And we see it in World's Strongest Man almost every year. Oh, with like the Anderson squat? Mm-hmm. True, true. And this was kind of an Anderson squat. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of was. So, how about that rogue monolith, though? That was a that was a beast of a setup. I don't understand why it had the cage. Mm. It looked like the monolith was a giant ass attachment that goes to their rogue monster series. May have been that might have was all it was. That might have been a, a rogue marketing thing too. Like, hey, we sell this monolith that you can easily attach to your cage. I'll tell you what, if they do have that. That uh, get our X rack that we mm. got, the Rogue Monster Series attachments fit that. Ooh, that would be a good thing to add. Our power lifters would like that. I mean, yes and no. We already have a monolift, and they hardly ever use it. That's true. So <laughs> <laughs> that is true. So while if it, it's really cool in theory, I, I'm just, I would just get a couple of the, mon- the, the monolift attachments right. like we have for the uh, the ones that we have for our our bench rack. Mm-hmm. They make those for that rack, too. Okay. So i just get something like that. That would be cool. I would like that. And it would be a quarter of the price. Even better. <laughs> and you can move it out of the way when you don't want to use it. Because mm-hmm. I have a feeling the one they had there was probably bolted in. Pro- for that much weight, probably. Yeah. I doubt they were in there just by pins. But, yeah, I had never seen a monolith with a Rogue branding on it so that was kind of interesting to see they probably even, made it just for this event maybe even if the event was boring as hell to watch i still thought it was cool i enjoyed it um especially especially watching jf Corone just just be an absolute monster that oh, was yeah. fun that is always fun um 
now the the monster deadlift was kind of a weird or not monster deadlift the uh the monster bell that they oh used. the two hundred seventy five pound yes on yeah. on Rogue's website they actually refer to those as a monster bell mm-hmm. instead of a circus dumbbell they're shot loadable dumbbells okay but for some reason every year that they've done a circus dumbbell press in the Arnold it's been their sear dumbbell rec or their their yeah their sear dumbbell replicas okay. And for some reason, I didn't go with that this year. And I'm honestly disappointed. Because, the, to, in my opinion, the sear dumbbell is so much cooler of an implement and is so iconic. Which one does that look like? Again? Which it, one is that? It just looks like an old-timey globed dumbbell. Okay, yeah. I know what you're talking to about. opposed the one with all the rogue branding on it. Right. No, I under, yeah, I, never, I know which one you're talking about now. But yeah, this year they decided to use the uh, the monster bell. A lot of people who I was expecting to do really well with this event did not do well at all. I was surprising how things went. There were a lot of zeros. Yep, you had, and the guy um, Novikov was hands down. Well, he dominated. Like yeah. no one came even a close. Second he got to seven him. reps. He got seven. The first two got three, yep. and then the following two got a zero. And then Novikov comes out there and just throws up seven. Yeah. And then after that, Rob Kearney got four. Yes. And Which I, that, I, I figured, because he's an explosive guy. Right. And then after that, I don't remember the others. I know Martin's got Martin's got three. Trey Mitchell was the one that got zero that surprised me. Who else had zero? I think Bobby Thompson might have had zero. Bobby Thompson had zero. Because he couldn't, he couldn't bring it over. He kept... He kept having the, the dumbbell out in front of him, and he could never get enough of himself under it to stabilize it. That was so. Bobby Thompson, he seemed to have trouble balancing it here yeah. in the rack position. You're thinking of Trey Mitchell. He was kept, that Trey Mitchell? Yeah, he kept throwing it out in front of him. Okay. And if you watch Novikov when he does it, he pops it up and quickly bends his body to the side at almost 45 degrees yeah. to compensate and get it back over center. Yeah. It's the weirdest looking thing, but it works for him. Got him seven reps. Yeah. He dominated that event. He's the only person I've seen that does a circus dumbbell in the manner that he does it. Did J.F. Carone do that event? Uh, He did. J.F. Carone also zeroed it. Okay. That's he, why I don't remember him. He zeroed. Yes. He, he cleaned it, went to press, and hurt his shoulder. That's right. He then hurt he, his shoulder. Then he went to clean it again. He got and, into the rack position and put let it, it down go. and said, I ain't doing this. Right. He, gave, he, uh, he quit on that. Of an injury, apparently. Yep. He had a rough... Well, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that part in a yeah. second. Uh, but yeah, like, Novikov completely dominated that event. I was impressed. Martins, if there was... So you ever seen those memes where it's like, I had a robot watch 10,000 hours of, of footage and had it write a script? Mm-hmm. You ever seen those? Yeah. If we had a robot watch 10,000 hours of Arnold Sports Festival commentary and had it write a script... It would just say Martinez was going to win because he's consistent over <laughs> and over and over again. I it, skipped over a lot of the commentary, but the ones I did catch, it's like, man, like they're really just giving it to him, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> like we could probably have a drinking game where we took a shot where we took a shot every time the commentator said he's so consistent. Martinez is consistent. So what you're saying is by the end of the first event, we'd be blackout. Yes. What you're saying. Definitely. <laughs> Which, you know. Who doesn't want to be blacked out while they're watching strongman stuff? Sure. Probably a lot of people. <laughs> uh, but they were right, though. Martins was very consistent. He came in top three in four out of five events and came in uh, He came in fourth for the one that he didn't. Yep. And that's how you win. And he was great. He was great. Well, that's how we won the Rogue. Well, we can get to that. We'll get to that, too. I honestly didn't watch any of the Rogue Invitational. I didn't either, but from what I understand, Martin Lisi's uh, performance was basically the same. That's he, how he always does. Yeah, he didn't really take first place in anything, but he did high enough to cross the board that he, he won. It's he really won. amazing how consistent he is. Yeah, he is so consistent. So consistent. So consistently consistent. I'll tell you what. I was surprised how well he did, though, because I think it was two weeks ago he had a bad back injury. How you... How you have a bad back injury, and then you go into this event? Guess it wasn't that bad. Probably, I'm going to go ahead and guess it wasn't that bad. It, it was weird. It was something with the muscle that he could squat just fine without any pain, but trying to walk hurt. That makes absolutely zero sense whatsoever. Well, it had to do with the shifting side to side. 
Okay. Yeah, like, because a guy that big, he shifts side to side when he walks. Like, I don't know if you <laughs> watched uh, – I want to say I noticed it with Bobby Thompson, but he waddled across the stage at one point. I mean, when you're that thick, I mean <laughs> – There's only so much you can do. Yeah. Like, you have to shift the weight to, you know, to keep that uh, – you have to keep that weight over center point. They're big, man. Yeah. He's a large human being. Giant, giant <laughs> humans. <laughs> Like, everyone thought Arnold was a big back in the 80s, but... No, these guys are big. Like Even, Ar- even Arnold, at his biggest offseason as, as he could get, and you still stand them up to these guys, they're still going to be bigger than well, them. Well, one thing I noticed was he, him, he, he looked like a... I mean, granted, it would have been a Benjamin Button kid, <laughs> but he looked like a kid when uh, staring up to Luke Stoltman after the log press when they yeah. were chatting. Yeah. You know, Benjamin Button kid because, you know, Arnold's in his 70s, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think he's in his 70s now. Still looks great. Yeah, he's still kicking. Yeah. Still lifts weights, too. It just goes to show you what lifting weights and rampant steroid abuse (laughs) can do to keep you young. Well, lifting weights, I agree with. Rampant steroid abuse. I'm not going to say that's a good idea. Probably not. (laughs) In fact, another pro-level bodybuilder died in his 50s just a few days ago. Yep. I, I didn't catch his name, but I saw everybody posting about it. Yeah, unfortunately, that's been happening lately. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, third event. So, those were the two events for day two. Then on day, day three, one. No, day, day one. Day one. Day one came before day two. Yep. Usually how that goes. It is not a Benjamin Button competition. No. <laughs> so, day two, they opened up with the Australian Oak. That uh, was That's uh, overhead, specifically the log. That is my favorite strongman event. You know, I used to think that, too, until they did the Apollon's Wheels one year. The what? The Apollon's Wheels. App, what's that? The Apollon's Wheels is where we get the axle press from. Hmm. What they did is they found the Apollon's Wheels in a museum, and they created an exact replica of them. And it's literally a railroad axle. Oh, I think I remember that now. It was like 300 and something pounds, and they yeah. did it for reps. It, that bar was thick. Yes. It, well, it was like a two and a half inch axle, I think. Yeah, I don't need to go back and find it. I think I remember but what you're talking about. That was about. a fun event to watch. Right. And I usually prefer to watch the, when it comes to overhead, I usually prefer to watch events for reps than for max. Really? Yeah, I just think they're more fun. And like it's fun because like, you can get the crowd involved a lot. Yeah, you can cheer them on to push out more reps and yeah. stuff. Yeah. But a lot of athletes came in at 380. Yeah. And then they, a lot more came in at 400. Yeah. We didn't get nearly as heavy as I was hoping. 420 seems to be the stopping point for most of them. Like it is. 420 was like, if I hit 420, I'm still in the race, and that's it. And that's why you need 200 kilograms to get invited to the Log Press World Championship. Okay. Which is 440. Which, who hit that? I think Bobby Thompson opened up with 440? Bobby Thompson opened up with 440. Right. Back in the day, Rob Kearney could have gotten that easily. Really? Yes. Yeah, because he used to be the American Raw World, or the American Log Press record holder. Oh, I didn't know that was Rob Kearney. Yep. I know Bobby Thompson has that record right now. Yes, he holds it right now. It went from... Uh, why can I picture him in my head, but I can't, like, make his name come out of my mouth right now? Um, shit, strong and pretty. Robert O'Burst. Robert O'Burst. He had it for a long time. Then Kearney took it from him because mm-hmm. Kearney could split jerk a log. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember that now. He was one of the now. only guys who could effectively split jerk a log. Right. Which was funny because, like, cause, like, Robert O'Burst didn't recognize his, his uh, achievement for a long time because he didn't push press it. Well, he got all butt hurt. It ain't up to a burst. No, no, nothing's up to a burst. Uh, and yeah, now Bobby Thompson holds it. Rob Kearney has gotten away from split jerking the log just because he injured his tricep, and I don't think he trusts it to stabilize that much weight anymore. Makes sense. But, but yeah, they put on a hell of a show. And while Luke Stoltman wound up winning the whole thing with, I think he got what four hundred and seventy pounds. He was four seventy. <clears throat> and it went up easy, easy. Like, it looked better than his first attempt. Actually, his, his first attempt sucked. 
His mm-hmm. second attempt was better. His third attempt blew it out of the water. His first attempt, I thought he was about to fall asleep for a second. Yeah. He looked like he was going to fall back out of it. Yeah, because, you know, that happens to people. <laughs> yeah, it does. Something about that log pushes you to sleep. Is that mm-hmm. when he gets sleep like a log because you fall asleep under a log? Cause what? You know how people say you sleep like a log? Oh, I slept like a log last night. I think they just say that because you're lying still as an inanimate object. Okay. Wasn't because logs put them to sleep? Probably not. Crushing them under tremendous weight? Probably not. Okay. You know, because the first log press didn't occur until the 70s. Eh. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm sure unofficially it happened before that, but... Um, in competition? In competition, like, I think it was... Um, shit. I can't remember which one said it in an interview, but they were talking about the first time they did, they did a log press. Mm-hmm. If you look... They started to like lean, stand the log up on one end and rock it over into the rack position. Huh. And the reason they did that is because the first few guys that tried to clean it from the ground, like a barbell, were tearing their biceps. Oh, really? Yeah, so they figured, well, maybe we're not supposed to do it this way. So they started doing it, standing it up on its end and rocking it like a Steinborn. Well, how did they manage to tear their biceps? Were they were jerking it? I guess. That's a lot of weight on the biceps. And. You know, back in the 70s, you didn't have the same training. Like, nobody trained for strongman True. in the 70s. You just kind of showed up with whatever discipline you had, and you went for it. Gotcha. It that wasn't until sense. later on. Um, so I think uh, John Paul Sigmundson had a full set of implements. Like, he, Iceland actually invested and got, got him what he needed, and that's why he was so dominant for such a long period of time. Gotcha. Because, like, Bill Kazmaier... He just did powerlifting and showed up and did, did strongman for one day a year. Right. While John Paul Sigmundson, he had a full set. Right. So, yeah, pretty interesting. Anyway, back to today, though, we now know how to properly clean a log. The biggest shock of that event, though, was definitely J.F. Carone. He was doing so well. Well, he did well in the squats. He didn't do well in the dumbbell. But he cleaned that log and, and night, then night. just folded. The thing is, I, I don't understand what happened. I've I watched, I watched that clip a few times, and I just don't understand what happened. So we don't have, or if they've, if they've announced on his Instagram, I haven't gone to check it yet. What it seemed like to me was he tore his quad on the clean. Whew. And then just folded. Because he was grabbing his leg after, but I thought that was because cause I saw the log come yeah, down. Yeah, that log his hit leg. his knee. So I thought that's why he was grabbing it, but, but I didn't really think that's what caused him to go to sleep I have or, a, or just completely. I, I have a feeling this was the last contest we'll see Jeff Corona in. I mean, he looked like he's getting up in the years. Well, he is. Um, and when he, obviously he dominated the squat, but when he was doing the dumbbell event, like, I just, I just didn't see it. Ooh. Like, yeah, he had the injury, but it's like, I just didn't feel like that was his well with athletes like brian shaw or zavinis Drukas being dominant in the sport for so long people forget the lifetime of this sport is not very long at that level no you know you're doing things the human body isn't meant to do then and you have to be good at such a lot we have to be good at a lot of different things at the mm-hmm. same time which is very hard to maintain and 10 years ago the weights weren't as heavy true they're these guys are stronger now than they've ever been which is fun to watch. Yes and no. Their muscles are, but their ligaments, their joints. Yeah. You know, we've probably peaked in what humans are capable of as far as what the joints and the ligaments and all that. At this point, we're just, we're, we're pushing the body past its limits for a few years. And it catches up with you. Yeah. It's why, it's why Eddie Hall, after one World Strongest Man title, he went to the house. It's why half the horse said when he, when he decided I'm on top, no one can beat me. He went to the house. Yep. You know, it's not worth that wear and tear. No, especially once you build yourself up. You yeah. know, you, people know who you are now. You have other opportunities. Yeah. You know, you don't have to kill yourself anymore. Yeah, it's not like, um, and I think that's why we didn't see Brian Shaw this year, too. Mm-hmm. He's gotten to the point where he has enough side businesses going. He's got stuff with the History Channel. He still competes, though. Like uh, I know he competes at his show. He does. Uh, I think now he... Which is weird to me. Well, from a competitor, I feel like if I have to compete against Brian Shaw on his own show, it's a little bit unfair. But he doesn't win his own show. Well, if people are beating him, then then I guess it doesn't matter. 
it, it kind of has the same vibes to me as, hey, guys, you want to come over and play some basketball? Or are you just inviting people to his house? Yeah, like, he's just this. inviting his buddies to his house for a day of strongman. Well, look, if, he, if Brian Shaw wants to invite me to his house for a day of strongman, I'm all about it. I'll get my ass whooped for a day. Yeah, I'll, 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 hey, look, if Brian Shaw beats my ass in a strongman competition, I'm just going to brag about it all day. Dude, Brian Shaw just beat my ass in a strongman. It was the fucking yeah. best day ever. I'd brag <laughs> Brian Shaw beat my ass in anything. <laughs> like Brian Shaw just beat me in pool. It was a great day. Yeah, it was awesome. He took 200 bucks off of me. He just kicked my ass at Mario Kart. <laughs> I don't know how he did it. The controller was so small in his hands. It's like, hey, guys, you want to come over and play Mario Kart? Like, Fuck yeah, I'll play yeah. Mario Kart with Brian Shaw. That'd be awesome. So, you, Brian, if you're listening. We want to come over to your house and play Mario Kart. We'll bring our own controllers. We both have an N64. Mm-hmm. Do you have Mario Kart? I might. I have Mario Kart. I think I have Smash Brothers, too. So, yeah, Brian, you don't even need to get a copy of Mario Kart. We'll, we'll just bring we'll ours. Over. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you got, a, like, a big TV we can borrow. Yeah, and we probably have the adapters to make the... Uh, to make the cable spit. We'll make it work. We'll figure it out. We're some pretty fart smellers sometimes. So, yeah, Luke Stoltman, he won that event decisively. Um, do you think, just just because of how easy it went up, do you think that he could be someone who could do a 500-pound log? He tried last year. Did he get it or no? He did not. Mm. Uh, he tried a couple of times. He was going for Big Z's record. Okay. And... He's still relatively young in strongman terms. As long as he stays uninjured, I think he can do it. He's 27? I don't know off the top of my head. I know he's under 30. I think they said he's 27. Okay. I think that's the number I heard. Which, yeah, that's that's still, you still got some years ahead of you. Yep. Like, I mean, Brian Shaw, he's like, what is he, 41? Something like that? Yeah, he's surprisingly older. And he's still, still in good shape. That was another thing you have to take a drink every time they say. Anytime they say this is the first time in 10 years that Brian Shaw, Big Z, or Half Thor aren't going to win it. <laughs> they did say that you a lot. Take, you have to take a drink. Yeah, they showed, they showed Thor on the sideline. Yeah. yeah, and they kept talking about how good he looked. I think they had a little... A little bit of a crash. Yeah, a little bit of a... I mean, which is fine. I'm not judging. But I'm just saying, man, like, you know. The one thing that I noticed, now that Thor is... <laughs> you, you good? <laughs> Don't die on us. The yeah. one thing I noticed when they showed Half Thor on screen and he like waved to the camera when he realized they were filming him, now that he's cut down so much weight, his hands look disproportionately large compared to the rest of his body. Because <laughs> they are. His hands are huge. <laughs> like, it looked like he held up Mickey Mouse gloves yeah. when he waved to the camera. Imagine getting punched in the face by those hands. No, thanks. Well, uh, Eddie can imagine that for me. Yeah, he will experience that. So, as, speaking of which, Eddie Hall still hasn't gotten injured again. No, nah, there's still time. <laughs> yeah, there's still time. It might happen. We're, uh, is that next weekend? I want to say it's two weekends from now. I want to say it's March 22nd. March 22nd. Okay, cool, cool. I'm about to check that. I don't think I'm... that's right because that's the middle of the week. You sure? Yeah. Oh. We don't need to check it right now. Uh, we got a comment that says, you guys need big red couches to sit on. Why? I don't know. Lift with Lisa. If you're still watching, tell us why do we need big red couches to sit on? Yeah, that's kind of weird. Big red couches to sit on. Maybe because it go with the colors. I don't know. Maybe. And for our fourth sponsor, we have Lisa, who is going to buy us <laughs> some big red couches. Everybody say thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Um. So yeah, on to the fourth event. We had the timber carry. Um. That event, just because I've seen it. Well, I mean, I guess I've seen all of them, but um, I know that that one wasn't quite as competitive as I was hoping it would be. Definitely not. In years past, they've been allowed to use straps, which on the one hand was always weird to me. I uh, see. I wouldn't. I would think it would be. I see why you would allow it, but at the same time, it's also a heavy grip thing. So why would you allow it? You know, it is. I think they were just trying to see if the human body could get eight hundred pounds uphill. What? Well, yeah, we Maxime with the Boudreaux. Maxime Boudreaux. Did he decisively? Is, he's really the only interesting thing about that event this go around. With the way he just he, he just sprinted it. up there. Eight seconds. It was eight point four one seconds. He was within a second and a half of having a new world record in that event <laughs> without straps. Crazy. And him and Martins were the only two that were able to get it up there in one shot. Martins did it in like ten seconds flat. Ten seconds flat. Yep. Yeah, he did it quickly too. Yep. Um, he's just so consistent. Hey, dude, he's consistent. He's very consistent. 
Like consistently consistent. 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 But yeah, he was the only interesting thing about that event. Like, I, I'm sorry, but I don't really care about watching people move move a heavy object five feet. Um, it's very boring to watch. And who, Kearney only moved it like a foot. Yeah. Uh, Trey Mitchell, he an, they moved. gave him an inch. Yeah. They literally gave him an inch. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeff Kern wasn't even in it. Nope. Who else? Bobby Thompson moved it a few feet. Yeah. Not very far. The Stoltman brother. I thought the Stoltman brother would be good at this. They were not. This was not Tom's day. Yeah. Like, Tom did not do well this event, which is not surprising when they said that he won He won UK Strongest Man either last weekend or the weekend before last. Ooh, he did, we, he did UK Strongest and then turned around and did the Arnold? If I had to guess, it's a payout. And, Probably. That's, know, that's, that's two huge events to do like that. Well, think about it. Like, uh, Martin said the same thing a few years ago. He competed in the, uh, in the Santa Monica in the Santa Monica Arnold mm-hmm. two weeks before the Arnold. Really? Yes. That's brutal. And when asked why, he was like, it was 15000 to the winner. Oh, well, hell, go for it. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he won. He's like, I needed the money. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I blame you. Go get it. Yeah, I'd do it too. And then he did very well that Arnold. But yeah. I think that was also the year that he like dropped the tombstone off the stage and all that. Right. But yeah, I uh, that was the year he he and Shaw went against each other head to head in Santa Monica. I need to go back and, and watch only that. Only one of them got to go to the Arnold, Whew. and Martins won it. It was Martins Lisi. Yep, that was uh, a consistent. That was a fun winner. comp to watch. Yeah, he's a consistent winner, you know. Yes, he's very consistent. But yeah, Maxime Boudreaux was really the only interesting thing about that event. That yeah. event. They were light and fast, though. Like, I was impressed. Like, Jesus, man. And oh. he, he he opened it up, didn't he? Yes. He was the first one no, to go. No, he wasn't the first one. He wasn't? I don't think so. No, Trey Mitchell was the first yeah. one. Then he was second. I don't remember the order. I'm not even going to pretend to. I don't know. So, yeah, last but not least, though, they had the tombstone, which I never knew <laughs> the story behind the tombstone and why it was called that. The, the stone the shoulder event? Yes, it was yeah. the stone shoulder event. Um Odd Haugen's ex-wife gave him that. Okay. Gave him that stone for like his birthday or something. It has his date of birth etched on it. Cool. Cool. And the day he dies, will be there will be another date etched on it. Wow. So that's why he is referred to as the tombstone. Interesting. So, so I have a huge problem with that event, though. And speaking of which, uh, we can kind of talk about that same thing. We can bounce back to the Monster Bell event because mm. I had a huge problem, a similar problem with that. <clears throat> what you got? Martins had an unfair advantage in both of those events. Which is? So Odd Haugen was the judge of the Monster Bell. Mm-hmm. Go back and watch Martins' third rep. He okay. did not have control over that. When the he dumbbell? The command. Yes. I have to go back and look. Like, I understand mistakes happen in judging, but if you're the guy who was the, what's what's the word? Like, if you were a huge influence in an athlete's career, Mm -hmm. if he worked out at your gym for years, and you you all are, like, friends in the real world, you probably don't need to be judging him. Because you're saying there might be a little, even if not on purpose, some favoritism. Yes. Yeah. You that, know, that, is, that is something to think about. But, yeah, go back and watch that. Martins is stumbling when he got the down command for that last uh, dumbbell press. Right. And, again, that's out of Haugen Stone. True. Martins used to train in the gym where it lived. So he probably trained with that stone. Oh, he, he definitely trained for it leading up to the Arnold. He trained for it leading up to every Arnold it's been in. So he's probably the only athlete there that trained with that implement. For this go-around, yes. Uh, back before Martins opened uh, his his gym record, mm-hmm. other athletes would come and he'd, he'd try work with them with that stone. But Martins definitely knows that stone very well. 
better than any of the other athletes. So he knew how to pick it. He knew how to put it on a shoulder. And coincidentally, he's the only athlete that got two reps with it. Yep, that is true. And the second rep, he didn't even need to. He no. just did it for showmanship. Um, that being said, though, like Novikov made him work for that win. Yeah. Had Martins been unable to shoulder that stone, Novikov would have won the won that event. Yep, and would have probably podium now. Well, Manovkov did podium. He would have won the whole thing. Right. He came in second. Yes. He would have won. That's right. He would have won the whole damn thing had right. Martins not been able to shoulder that stone. Hey, sometimes you get an advantage. Yep. <clears throat> who came in third? I can't remember who came in third. Martins won the whole thing. Novikov came in second. Carney came in fourth. Boudreau? Did Boudreau come in third? No, I do not think so. We'll figure that out later. Yeah. But, yeah, that was the event. Um, it definitely was not my favorite Arnold to watch. Okay. Why is that? Uh, well, a few a few reasons. They didn't do it on the big stage. That seemed kind of odd. Mm-hmm. Which I understand why to an extent. Because a couple years ago, that stone fell off the stage and almost killed Arnold. Oh, that could be why. Yeah. yeah. So that might be a big reason why. But... It doesn't have that same grandiose effect that it's had in the past. If no, it's I understand. The same level as everything else. Yeah. You know, that was that's a big draw to Neil Arnold. Is it's set up as a big show. Right. Rather than, you know, just a standard competition would be. I didn't like some of the events. Okay. Like, I hated the squat. Did you? Yeah, like, I understand. But I also hated the elephant bar deadlift, too. Well, I think, I think you say that about the deadlift just because you're just tired of seeing deadlifts. I'm tired of seeing standardized equipment in shows that size. Okay. That's what I'm tired of seeing. You know, I want to see more creative events. What? Yeah, that is kind of the draw to strongman. It's it just is. kind of the, the, the oddity of what you're doing. You know, like, if we're going to squat, let's do a car squat for reps. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be so much cooler. Yeah, I actually agree. It's just why I'm attracted to this sport because at any given competition, you don't really know what – could be in store for you. Yeah. You know, maybe a Max Steinborn squat. Okay. Oh, that would have been cool. That would have been cool. That would have been fun to watch those guys get under that. You know, but like, not only are we watching a, not only are we watching a squat with standardized plates, Mm -hmm. but we're watching them not even do a walkout because they're doing it out of a monolift. One of them actually did a walkout. That's very common with people who squat with monoliths. Just because if you're not used to training with a monolift, it can screw you up if you don't do a walkout. Okay, because you it don't because you have setup. to set your feet and yeah. all that. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you, if you're gonna if you're gonna compete with a monolift, you need to train with a monolift. Which now now that I think about it, I walk out on my squats too. So for me yeah. to just pick it and squat, I can feel how that would be a weird transition. But um, like, so they announced the events for Alabama's strongest yesterday. I went and got under a yoke earlier and tried to set up for that for uh-huh. a bottom up squat. It's gonna be brutal. I haven't looked at the weights. Um, They're empty right now. The weights don't say anything. It says to be determined. Oh, because it's a max effort. Yeah. Oh, so we're just gonna see where it goes. I guess. Shit. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a brutal day. It is gonna be so brutal. Do you wanna do you wanna talk about that day or? I don't know the events off the top of my head well enough to really talk Alabama strongest yet. Okay, well, we can save that for another weekend. Yes, uh, but we can say that Alabama Strongest was announced. It is mm-hmm. going to be, what's it, August 6th or August 8th? August 6th. August 6th. It's going to be Gulf Shores, Alabama. If you haven't signed up already, definitely signed up. It's going to be an awesome event. It always sells out. I signed up this morning, and there were seven spots going when I signed up. Yeah, it's going to be a hell of an event, and it's their 10th year doing it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Yeah, this is going to be a – this is this – is, Outside of the events that I help that I help you with, this this is a big deal for me. <laughs> yep. And we always treat it as a mini gym vacation too, because several of the gym memberships have birth our gym members have birthdays that weekend. Yeah. Uh and it's on the beach. It's just it's a fun time. Yeah, we're gonna be making a reservation for a room for a few days. It's a brutally hot day. Yeah, it's gonna be a brutal day, but it's a it's a great day. Yep. So, wow, with all that, we're only at the 39-minute mark. Well, I guess we should keep talking. Yep. Um, do you have any interest in seeing the Batman? 
I have not seen it yet, but lift with Lisa did respond. She said, definitely not. Just seemed like it would suit the scenery. Okay. So she's not going to buy us any couches. Yeah. That's a bummer, Lisa. One job, Lisa. (laughs) One job. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, I guess I can give a quick spoiler free review for uh, the new Batman movie. Yeah, just give us your general thoughts about it. So, according to the internet, I am wrong, but I hated it. Why do you hate it? So, that's going to be very difficult to do without giving away spoilers. Um, I thought they did a few things very well. Mm -hmm. I thought that the Riddler was an incredible villain. Okay. I thought they did the Penguin very well. Who played the Riddler? I don't know his name. I had no idea who this dude was, but he did a very good job. So it's probably his acting debut, or his I don't debut. think it was his acting debut because this dude was a good actor. Okay, like Heath Ledger level. This dude's nuts. Really? Yes, that's rare. The Riddler was awesome. Okay, the thing that really shined for me was how Gotham was portrayed. I'm, I'm from what I understand, it was supposed to be like super gritty, dark. It was so dark. Yeah, and um, so I'll tell you in the very beginning of the movie. The first time they show, like, the bat signal, Mm -hmm. they show all these different crimes happening around Gotham at the same time. Right. Then they show the bat signal as these crimes are kind of coming to an end, and it's stuff like the criminal's running, and he's about to cut through this alley, and then he sees how dark the alley is. And he's like, I don't And he drops the money, and he runs. Who do you think Batman's in there? Yeah, because you never know where he is. It just, it shows... That was the thing I really loved about the movie was it showed Batman's effect on the criminal underworld and instilling fear. In it was. Everybody. I was about to say it that made fear all, element. It made all the criminals scared of the dark. Okay, and that was cool. And in my opinion, it was all downhill from there. Really? Yes. Was it was it Robert Pattinson's playing of the Batman that turned you off? Partially. I'm not going to say he was a horrible actor, but I didn't feel it in the role. I'll say that he looked like a Holocaust victim. <laughs> well, that's, that's that's harsh. Like, which is funny because Batman is by he's huge. All, about to say Jack, he's supposed man. to be huge. Yeah. Robert Pattinson, ref- he said in an interview, he refused to weightlift for the role. I saw that, which 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 to me was kind of a red flag. It's like Batman is jacked. Flag. It's like, how do you not lift weights for that role? But like, they show this scene where he's like shirtless from behind, like over a table. Mm-hmm. And the most prominent thing on that dude's backs were his shoulder blades. Because he's skinny. Yeah. He was I mean, hell, even... Uh, Batman should not be scrawny. Alec... Not Alec. Not Alec. The guy who played him... The last two Batman. Ben Affleck? Ben Affleck. Ben was, Affleck got huge. He got jacked. And then... The, damn it, the other one from The Dark Knight. Christian Bale, he didn't get huge. But, but he, he but put he, on some muscle. He wasn't he was small. Fit. He was like 190 pounds. He was fit. Right, which is still like, you know, not a small guy. Like, that build would have been ideal for this Batman. Right. And he wouldn't even do that. It's like, how do you not lift weights to and play Robert Batman? Robert Pattinson has the frame for it. It's like saying, oh, I'm not going to I'm not gonna get big to play Superman. It's like, yeah, you can't do it. You can't be the Man of Steel or the Dark no. Knight and not be jacked. Like, when Ben Affleck's Batman, he even had a lifting montage yeah, in his that was awesome. It's like I, I don't, I don't know, man. But there was that. I I liked the suit from the neck down. I did not like the cowl, and I didn't like how the how the cape attached to the suit. Okay, I didn't like those two things. Zoe Kravitz, while she played a very good Catwoman, mm-hmm. her character was completely unnecessary. And they forced a love story between her and Batman that felt forced and unnecessary. Okay. Like, very forced and unnecessary. I'll have to see it. Um, Like, her character did not need to be in this movie. That being said, I hope if they do make sequels, I'm going to see them, and I hope they expound on it. I hope they, they flesh it out a little bit more. Right. Because there is potential there. There's a... Chase with the Batmobile. Okay. It is also very forced and unnecessary. Did the Batmobile at least look cool? Yes and no. It's it's a souped up muscle car. Like a seventies model super uh muscle car. Well, isn't that is kinda what the first Batmobile with like Adam West looked like, so it that's what it kinda reminded me of. It, kinda it tracks. reminded me of 
the old Adam West Batmobile. But then again, all the Batmobiles after that have been like just completely different. Like, like its own. The thing. one from Justice League looked awesome. Yeah, that's how the Batmobile should look. <laughs> while the one in the Dark Knight and Batman Begins, while it looked cool, is not the Batmobile. It was, it was impractical. Yeah, it was a tank. It was literally a tank. Yes, and. <laughs> The point where the movie really lost me is, this is kind of a spoiler, but not really. Do you remember how awesome the gliding effects were in The Batman Begins? Yeah. Like, he had tech that went into, it, it responded to an electrical pulse. They would rigid, they would put create a rigid skeleton in, mm-hmm. the, in the cape to essentially turn it into a hang glider. Yeah, I remember that. This Batman hits a button, it ejects the cape, and turns his suit into a wingsuit. Eh. Yeah. I don't like that. It. I understand they were going for realism. And but while it, Batman, his power is being rich. But it's still a comic book it's movie. It's still a comic book movie. Like, you still need those elements to make it what it was. Yes. So, as far as pros go, it was an incredible detective movie. Mm-hmm. It, it had that, like, 50s film noir kind of a feel to it. Right. As far as a gritty, down-to-earth detective movie. But it felt like the old Joel Schumacher Batman movie, Batman was thrust into a world full of realism. Hmm. Did they at least have some good fight scenes or no? Kind of. Chris, ben Affleck really set the bar high. Yeah. With the way he brawled. Like the scene where he busts in to save um to save Martha Kent. Yeah, over top violence. Over the top violence. Yes. Like, just everything was quick, brutal, and decisive. Yeah, like every every shot was basically a kill shot. This Batman I feel like he gets his ass whooped a lot. How how do you have a Batman who gets beat up? You have one that's not very strong. I don't well it, well yeah. Like, Batman who doesn't lift. No amount of fight choreography or special effects would have made you believe this Batman could have beaten my ass. <laughs> See, that's how that kind of tells me that it's not a good Batman when you watch that movie and say, I could take him. He would have <laughs> been a really good Batman for um shit. I always brain fart on his name, the guy that played the most recent Joker. Oh, uh, jo- uh Joaquin Phoenix? No, no, before that. Heath Ledger? No. In between that. Oh, Jared Leto. Yes. They would have been perfect for each other because they're both like... Wiry. Yeah. Like, scrawny. Like wormy little nerds. Not intimidating. <laughs> Which is, you know, funny given the name of our podcast. <laughs> but you know what I mean, though. So I get you. Like, neither of them were intimidating at all. And I'm seeing all these TikTok creators saying that Robert Pattinson had an incredible Batman. He, you know, he's very intimidating when he's on screen. I'm like... Are we looking at the same guy? I haven't seen it yet, so I can't offer much of an opinion. But if you're telling me that we have a scrawny Batman whose most pronounced feature is his shoulder blades, which tells me skinny. He's very skinny. Because jack guys, big strong guys, you don't see their shoulder blades. You see yeah. their freaking traps. Yeah. So, yeah. The detective aspect was cool. The Joker was, I mean, not, not the Joker, the Riddler was cool. Gotham was awesome. Oh, the the jo- the 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 Riddler and the Penguin; those were the only two villains. Well, and Catwoman, you, she's considered a villain in the Batman Batman universe. Well, I thought but she, she kind of weaves in and out. Yeah, between. she wasn't very villainous in this one because she was solely put in there to be a love interest for Batman. Eh, I could do without the love interest. She in didn't Batman. really drive the story very much. She was a completely unnecessary character. See, I like the Catwoman from um, the Dark Knight Returns, Batman Returns. Is it Dark Knight Returns With Anne Hathaway? Yeah. That's who played her, right? Was yeah. it Anne Hathaway? I think it was Anne Hathaway. I think it was Anne Hathaway. Yeah. I like that one. I thought she played that role good. You know, the... Um, and the romance was... Wait, The Dark Knight Returns? Or are we talking The Dark Knight Returns? Or are we talking... Um, no, The Dark Knight Returns, the third movie with, with Bane. Is that what it was called? Because Batman Begins, The Dark Knight. They did call it The Dark Knight Returns. Dark Knight okay. Returns. Yeah. In my head, I was confusing that with Batman Returns, with which also had Catwoman in it. Which one was Batman Returns? Was that the animated series? No, Batman Returns. That was the second Batman movie that Tim Burton made. 
with Michael Keaton. Oh, so, right. Um, yes. Yeah, with uh, Danny DeVito as the Penguin, and right. I can't remember her name as Catwoman. She looked good in that suit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I kept thinking, wouldn't it have been awesome if they would have brought Danny DeVito back to play the Penguin in this? That actually probably would have been but cool. But made him like an old, like grizzled, like, like darker grizzly. version of the Penguin. That probably would have worked. Before. Oh, yeah. Probably would have worked well. I think he could have pulled it off. Yeah. You know, Danny DeVito is actually like 5'8". He's 5'8"? Yeah. I thought he was shorter than that. No, he's same. He's same height as Tom Cruise. So you're saying I'm the same height as Tom Cruise? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, right? <laughs> Tom Cruise just shoots everything to make himself look taller, and Danny DeVito shoots everything to make himself look shorter. I thought I thought Danny DeVito was like 5'1", five, 5'3". Five, and it's because after Danny DeVito's first movie, <clears throat> him and his agent made the decision that he was going to be the short, funny guy. Okay. So they have all of his shots made to look, make him look tiny. And then there's that movie where he's in with Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the 90s, which really made him look small. Yeah, that's the idea. It really worked out for him. Yep. He's so rich. <laughs> that's the thing you know now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but that's about it that I can really give for Batman without getting really, really spoilery. Like I said, according to the Internet, I'm wrong. Everyone seems to love this movie. Yeah. There was just there were a few things that I just I couldn't get past with it. Well, I think um, what might explain the difference in the opinions is that you have been a huge comic book fan for a long time, and you know, like a lot of the I know intimate... comic book fans that really love it. Really? Yeah. Well, because I was gonna say like guys like you that have like that real intimate knowledge about the different you know stories. Mm-hmm. Compared to this generation of movie watchers and comic, you know, like the superhero movies really only started getting into it when it became a onto movie. the big screen. Yeah. Right. They don't have the knowledge that people like you would have to be able to dissect a movie in those kind of details. Which is funny because that's one of the reasons I don't really like the Christian Bale movies as comic book movies. Okay. Because they are not very comic accurate. But they, well, yeah. Well, I wouldn't be able to tell you that yeah. um, other than I just thought they were really well done movies. It, it, it were really well done <laughs> movies. And this was a well done movie. But it was not. But it was not a comic movie. Gotcha. Similar in the way that The Joker was a well done film. Right. But it wasn't a comic book movie. Wait, you say The Joker, you mean the movie The Joker? Yes. With Joaquin Phoenix? Yes. It was a well done film. In my opinion, from a movie watcher experience, that was one of the best Best movies I've seen, period. And that's kind of the same way the Batman is. It was just a big cinematic. Yes, it is a very good film. Yeah, I thought all four of But it's not a good comic book movie. Okay. I, like I said, I wouldn't be able to know all the details to really be able to give you that kind of analysis. Are you going to be able to go see it, you know, with the, you know, the burdens of fatherhood and all that stuff? Pro- pro- honestly, probably not. Yeah. Um. That would be a movie. I just have to wait till it starts to stream, and I'll watch it. Yeah. So if if people if I end up seeing spoilers, it it's also three hours long. Is it really? That's a long ass movie. And it had like nine endings. Nine. In- oh, it just kept. Yeah. Gotcha. It felt like, dude, where's my car? And then, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, like there were there were like five points in the movie where it would have naturally ended, like. Like watching the extended version of Return of the King. Okay. Yeah, I got you. You know, there's all the different points where it would have naturally have ended, but they just kept going. Well, you did say there were some forced parts, so it sounds yeah. like they're trying to force things. Yeah. I'd like to know why Robert Patterson? Why him for this role? I have no idea. People tell me he's a really good actor, but I've never watched a complete Robert Pattinson movie. The only thing that I've seen him in, and it's only because my wife watches it, is Twilight. You don't have to flex, man. You can say you like those movies. I really didn't. I watched them with her because she was watching him. Were you Team Edward or Team Jacob? I'm sorry, what? Were you Team Edward or Team Jacob? I was Team both of them fucking dying, but, you yeah. know, whatever. Okay. Actually, I, I'll give you an honest opinion. I'll say Team Jacob because Edward just comes off as a conceited prick, but that's just my opinion. Well, my whole problem with those movies was he's supposed to be like an immortal. Mm-hmm. He was around in the 1700s. Right. What does this 18-year-old girl have to offer him conversation-wise? Assuming she's 18. She might be 18. I mean, I'm hoping she was 18 by the time he knocked her up. But, like, she's high school, man. You're, like, 700 years old. Yeah. What are you doing? 
It's it's really really creepy and a huge red flag. Sounds like to me like uh, her dad should have went and put a stake in his heart. Yeah, right. Yeah, rooting for Bane to show up the whole movie. Say that again. Rooting for Bane to show up the whole, not Bane, Blade to show up the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> Would have been awesome. Blade to come out with a sword and just cut his head off. I can't wait for the Blade movie to come out. Oh, they're making another one? You didn't know that? No. Yeah. Did you see the Eternals? The Eternal? No, I need to go watch it. All right. Well, never mind then. But, well, just real quick, is it going to be Wesley Snipes' Blade? No. Damn. No, I don't remember the guy's name that's playing him. Like, I can picture him in my head and, like, other things he's been in, but I don't remember his name. I'm assuming it's a black actor, because that's the character. Well, right? I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It'd be the, really weird know. if they got, like, an Irish dude to play Well, I don't, like, I, know. I don't know what he looked like in the comic books. I just he remember. black guy. Yeah. <laughs> Wesley Snipes' three movies, and I really <laughs> enjoyed him. <laughs> oh, it's a shame Wesley Snipes is so old, because it would have been cool to bring him back. He's in his 50s now, huh? Probably older than that. You think? I don't know. How old was he when, in, when he was in Demolition Man? I have no idea. Let's say he was in his 30s. Like, yeah, no that idea was before whatsoever. Blade. Demolition Man before, was mm-hmm. probably before Blade. And Blade was like 20 years ago. Yeah, I was a kid when Blade came out. Yeah. I don't think I was 10 yet. Shit. <laughs> yeah, you feel old now, don't you? <laughs> a little bit. You're 30. 30. 30, 30. All right, well, uh, let's see. We're at the 55-minute mark. You ready to take this one home? Um... Yeah, I don't really have anything else off the top of my head. Okay, yeah, and, you know, if we make this too long, people stop listening, so might as well save a little bit of goodness. All right, let's, let's, let's end it then. Let's just combine the word golden and goodness in my head, and it did not come out well. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to recap on the sponsors again real quick. First and foremost, we have Unmasked Studio. Check them out on Instagram. Give them a like. Give them a follow. Tag us in your favorite one of his cosplays. We'd love to see it. Next, we have... StrikeForceEnergy.com. Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. Use promo code ATLASSTRENGTH at checkout. You're going to save 20% on all of your energy needs. Go get you some of that sweet caffeinated goodness. Next up, we have Impact Mouth Guards. Use promo code ATLASSTRENGTHSHOP at checkout. You're going to save 10% on all of your mouth guard needs. You're going to get to keep all your teeth. I know um, I want to keep all my teeth, so I'm assuming you all do too. I like to keep them in my head. And last but not least, the Atlas Strength Shop. That is us. We are a strongman, powerlifting, weightlifting, whatever kind of strong strength sport you participate in, gym, located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We do a big strongman Saturday event every single Saturday at 10 a.m., unless otherwise listed on the Instagram. Go follow us there if you want to know more. And we have a lot of really awesome apparel on the website. And if you use promo code ATLASNERDS10 at checkout, you're going to save 10% on all of your apparel needs. Am I forgetting anything? think that covers it. Okay, last but not least, give us a five-star rating on iTunes and go and click the share link and share us with all of your friends. Until next time, see ya. See ya.